Okay, this is just a short demo of the BioCommons Wiki and the Bio Tool, uh, tool Toolbar prototype that we've been developing. And so I'll walk you through some of the things. The BioCommons Wiki, of course, would provide a place for people to post detailed information about common knowledge. For instance, a page on transcription factors that would be put together by those given login rights and so forth for the uh, for the wiki. It also would be a location for sharing out tools like the Bio Toolbar. And of course, here we're showing a bare bones uh, version of things where we auto load uh, the toolbar itself onto the user's browser. There, of course, will be registration pages and so forth uh, between the actual download and so forth in the next round of prototyping. Uh, in addition, it'll be set up in such a way that it will also download and install, auto-install uh, bioinformatics software uh, on the uh, user's uh, computer as part of the registration setup process. Um, also, uh, one of the things that uh, will, you'll note here is that everything here is, of course, oriented towards the University of Washington and the resources at the University of Washington Health Sciences Library. That, of course, is because we're, you know, we have full access rights to things here at University of Washington. But, uh, of course, as we contact your individual libraries and get appropriate information about how you guys do things like dealing with restricted resources and proxy servers and so forth, we'll be able to customize this toolbar to fit exactly what you guys do. So, anyways, here we go. We have uh, the toolbar has been successfully installed automatically, as you can see here. And then we can go about starting to use the browser that has the toolbar installed. And of course, from there on, all browsers that are uh, run off of the uh, system have that toolbar in their toolbar list. Now, the far left icon is the Bio Toolkit icon. It would take you to any toolkit that was local to your a particular university. This one takes you to the Bioresearcher Toolkit, which is our collection of basic bioinformatics and other types of resources at the University of Washington Health Sciences Library. You can also do a search of a number of different databases. You could search PubMed. In this case, I'm going to search Entree. I'm going to be using the gene SOX2 as an example. SOX2 is important because it turns out that it is a gene that is part of the group of genes that can convert ordinary skin cells to pluripotent stem cells. So you can see we get a number of returns in the Entree uh, search. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Entree Gene Summary section. And of course, SOX2 for humans comes up at the top of the list of hits. I go ahead and select SOX2 for the human uh, gene. And that takes me to the SOX2 Entree Gene Summary page. And you know that these pages are highly matrixed with all kinds of resources, some restricted, some not. And so in order to use them properly, it's nice to have a way of easily accessing those resources directly from the page viewed in your browser. In this case, the genes, uh, gene references in the function, or gene riffs, is an example of embedded PubMed papers, for example. In this case, I'll pick a paper, this paper about the ectopic expression of the genes that convert uh, skin cells to pluripotent stem cells. And that takes us to uh, the PubMed abstract summary page for that paper. And as you can see, you get the summary and the link to the actual article would be through the nature button located in the upper right hand uh, corner of the uh, abstract section. If you click on that, that will take you to um, the article uh, in nature, the summary, rather, the abstract of the article in nature. And that should come up on screen very shortly. And as you can see, there's a limited amount of information that's available from the site. Since we're off-site, it doesn't take us directly to the university's uh, access. If we were go to go ahead and click on full text here, we would get the access denied message 
indicating that we need to read or rather need to make a payment or have a login to see the full text of the article. So we're working off site. We need to read this article. And so it's not uh, particularly easy to get to that uh, by ordinary means. But with the bio toolbar, all you have to do is click the login button that will take you in the case of the University of Washington to a UW Net ID uh, login page where you log in providing your appropriate password and identification information we'll just watch as this cycles through just enter in your UW Net ID if you were at the University of Washington and in your password and of course we could customize this to your systems your local systems Once you do that, hit the login button and the screen will refresh. Back to the abstract page from PubMed with one key difference. In the case of the University of Washington, you'll now know that you have access to the restricted material by the presence of the uh, purple UW uh, article online button. In that case, you just click on the UW article online button, and that would take you to the same abstract summary page that we saw in Nature at Nature's site. However, uh, when you get there, you'll notice a key difference when you try and get the full text or, for that matter, download the PDF version of the full article. In this case, we'll just look at the full text once that comes up on screen. And again, we're right back where we were originally um, at the abstract summary page uh, at the journal nature. And you can see that. And of course, if we were to go then go ahead and click on the full text link in this case, that would take us directly to the full text article with all the images and all the detailed information and so forth and so we would have complete and free access to the material that we were after the actual full text with the methods and images and graphs and so forth uh, of the original article as you can see here in the demo and so that takes care of access issues for since for instance to PubMed uh, this would also be the approach that might be used for other restricted access to databases and things of that sort specific to your university, your locale.